Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we have multiple Velo related projects, some great working group progress, gizmos are seeing much more usage, and more. Bevy Jam 5 voting is finishing up within the next 24 hours, so congrats to all who participated and look forward to seeing a video on that. Bevy's fourth birthday also happened this weekend with a great post from Cart, who is Bevy's creator and project lead. The post includes a great overview of the last year, as well as a call for the community to write their own Bevy birthday post. One month from now, a follow-up reflecting on Bevy's fourth year roll-up post will aggregate these community posts in one place. 14600 helps answer the question of how often should your gameplay logic run by adding some new documentation to the fixed update and update schedules. This can be an important distinction since update will run once per render frame, which can affect behavior when players play your game at different frame rates or varying frame rates. Fixed update, by contrast, runs at a steady 64 hertz by default and is where you can put behavior that includes game logic that shouldn't, quote, speed up at higher frame rates. Adding additional context and color, the unofficial Bevy cheat book has a section called Should I Put My Systems in Update or Fixed Update? That is also quite informative. And winding is the order of vertices that define a triangle. If you connected a thread to one vertex in a collection of three vertices, it would be the direction you have to wind that thread around the rest of the vertices to form a triangle, either clockwise or counterclockwise. This direction affects what is considered the front face of your mesh, which in turn can affect whether the mesh is rendered or not, depending on whether you're viewing the front or the back face, and whether you are choosing to render back faces at all. 14555 introduces mesh invert winding. For inverting the winding on a mesh, which can effectively switch out the front and back faces without affecting other attributes like UVs. And 13152 added support for reflecting functions. Now 14098 added a function registry similar to the type registry that already exists, allowing the registering and retrieving of functions. Next up, we're talking about depth buffers. Depth buffers are effectively grayscale textures that you can write to from a fragment shader, where the value of a given pixel describes how far away from the camera that pixel is. WGPU can use this texture to determine whether a pixel should draw in front of another pixel. And in a 2D environment, you're typically restricted to having all of a sprite either in front of or behind another sprite. But with a depth texture, you have control of this per pixel, as you can see here. The image shown here uses a custom fragment shader to simulate a 3D-like depth control on 2D meshes and sprites, allowing one sprite to walk through the middle of another sprite. And that's made possible with 13069, which adds a depth buffer to Bevy's 2D processing. For those render-headed folks, you'll note that this is adding an opaque phase to render mesh 2Ds. If you want to take advantage of the depth buffer in a fragment shader in the 2D pipelines, you'll want to use Material 2D to write to the frag depth built-in. I've included a bit of sample code on the site if you're looking to try this out. And the Bevy Mod Picking Upstreaming Working Group has made significant strides this week with the upstreaming of the remainder of Bevy Picking Core in 14686. Much of this work can be found in the Bevy Picking Crate, but do note that this work isn't yet functional for end users. More work is still to be done building on top of the already merged event propagation for observers. Speaking of working groups, the Curve Crew Working Group is also making progress with 14630, implementing part of the Curve RFC. The Curve RFC, of course, introduces a general trait API called Curve for shared functionality in curves within Bevy's ecosystem. This involves a whole number of different things, so we've linked to the RFC on the site if you want to read it. With that in mind and Part 1 merged, Part 2 is already up for review. And next up, we've got skins, which are the data that tells a bone which vertices it should be deforming when moved. 14.343 makes this data available to users in a way that enables skinned mesh creation without spawning a scene. And of course, we've got Alice's Merge Train, which is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. She always puts together a great thread of the community approved backlog, so definitely go take a look if you're interested in what's getting merged. And with that, we've made it to the showcase. Our first up, Jarl Drag and Drop. Jarl added Drag and Drop inventory space using vanilla Betty UI. This won't be the only time we see Jarl this week, and this demo is looking pretty good. Next up, we've got an open street map rendering with gizmos. This is open street map data pulled into Bevy and rendered with gizmos in anticipation of building a large scale city simulation game. And next up, we've got a 2D space game. 
This is experimenting with making a destructible polygon system for smashing asteroids. It uses Voronoi and Lloyd relaxation to decompose polygons. This is built on avian physics and light year networking, although this showcase is a local only test bed, so isn't really showing off light years networking. And from space to space, we've got a space grid game demo. This is a 2D grid based space game built with avian 2D, more avian. Each cell in the grid has properties such as gravity. The levels are serialized and loaded in via JSON. And congratulations to specific protagonist who won the AI settlement generation challenge in Minecraft presented at the IEEE conference on games with a project that uses Bevy ECS. This code can be seen on GitHub under the specific protagonist slash Frightful Hobgoblin repo, which gives even a better view of the village that is generated. Our next showcase showcases quite a few technologies. Typist is a replacement for LaTeX written in Rust, while Velo is an experimental 2D graphics rendering engine written in Rust. Maybe you can sense the theme here for things being written in Rust. Velo has a focus on using GPU compute shaders and has an integration in Bevy Velo. All of this to say Bevy Typist integrates Typist and Bevy using Velo as the rendering engine to render Typist documents inside of Bevy. And from 2D to planetary scale, this is some destructible planetary tech that's a work in progress. The mesh, texture, and destruction are all procedural. The Earth is using real elevation maps and ocean depth maps to create exaggerated relief bumps. The lava is using simplex noise and animated with globals time, which is effectively res time that is available in shaders. And from space to home to build a home's duties tab detects if your character has gone to work and paid rent on time. The consequences of failing are shown, but can't be enforced yet by the game. So you've got a couple moments of free rent here. The game has additionally started using MLUA, which gets a sandboxing discussion in the Discord thread. And this top-down game shows the initial work on a top-down multiplayer game, which is powered by Bevy Replicon. This unexpectedly satisfying demo shows a small ship that shoots around the screen, leaving permanent effects on the playing field and changing colors over time. And from ships back to Jarl, this is a notification stack this time. The notification stack shown here uses vanilla Bevy UI types and is, of course, implemented in the Jarl game. This includes stacking individual items as well as stacking notifications vertically and disappearing them over time. Next up, we've got this 2D platformer demo, which uses Bevy Tanua, Dolly, Bevy ECS LDTK, and Avian 2D to create this beautiful looking 2D game. We talked a little bit about curves earlier, but Project Harmonia implemented initial road support. Currently, segments are used for road creation, with Bezier curve support planned for the future to allow curved walls and roads. Next up, we've got a particle demo where particles spread out evenly over time if they've been left alone. Next up, we've got some character animation. This is an animation graph implementation showing character bones and controls. And this will not be the only Falling Sand demo that we see. This is Falling Sand Bending Brawler, a Falling Sand inspired prototype where there are three moves, grab, set, and parry. From many particles of sand to goal-oriented action planning, this is a work in progress crate. Set up some state fields, some actions, define when actions can be taken, and the planner will handle the rest. Next up, we've got a Quibble race inspired game a spiritual successor to Quibble Race as a Jackbox style party game. Heads up that our next demo is quite bright and will have a white background. This is a compute shader based sand simulation. It was upgraded to Bevy 0.14.1 and now uses atomic operations instead of swapping two buffers on the GPU side. A bunch of historical videos about the progress of this particular project are included in the Discord thread, as well as a suggestion to read Sandfall intro, which we've linked to on the site, if you're going to attempt a similar thing. And this showcase is a gizmo driven heads up display on a space truck. This is taken from a work in progress open world space game where players master orbital dynamics to fly challenging missions like smuggling contraband past patrol satellites, deploying telescopes at Lagrange points or making deliveries between binary planets like Kerbal Space Program, but focusing more on flying and operating spacecraft with detailed interiors, life support and end body gravity. There's some interesting benchmarking of gizmos versus other approaches in this Discord thread as well. And for our next showcase, we're back with Quartz. In this case, we've got a circular scope visualization 
that was introduced to the Quartz DSP. This scene is Assets Circular Scope in the Quartz Visual Programming slash DSP repo. These demos, as always, are open source, so you can access them if you would like to. And finally, in our showcases, we've got a real-time gemstone ray tracer with an attached modeling program for creating gems that you can see in action here. Moving a little further along, you can see a little bit more of the gem being created and refined. And of course, towards the end, we get a look at the fully rendered gem, which is just really fun to look at. I like seeing all of the little light bounce reflections. And with that, we are into crates. First off, we've got Bevy ECS Tiled 0.3.4. Work with 2D tile maps created using the Tiled Map Editor, built on top of Bevy ECS Tile Map. 0.3.4 adds new examples for rapier and an isometric map, properly handling Z order and the ability to map tiled user properties to Bevy components, which having used tiled before is really nice because otherwise you're just dealing with a bunch of strings. And this demo comes from Bevy UI Anchor, Anchor UI nodes to either fixed points in the world or another entity. And for our next crate, we've got Woodpecker UI, which was a crate that I used personally during the Bevy game jam. Woodpecker UI is a Bevy ECS driven user interface crate that's designed to be easy to use and work seamlessly with the Bevy game engine. This release is the open sourcing of the crate and a crates.io release will come in late August. You can check out some more of the examples in the preview YouTube video you're seeing here. But some of the most interesting things about this UI library are that it's rendered using Velo, like we saw earlier with Typist, uses Taffy for layouting just like Bevy, and uses Cosmic Text for text layouts, which is what Bevy seems to be using in 0.15. There are also some fairly impressive demos like tabs and a full-on to-do list with an input. Next up, we've got Bevy La Mesa. This is a crate to build card games like Hearthstone with Bevy. The plugin was made during Bevy Jam 5, and here you can see an example of how to use it. Bevy Light 2D got a 0.3 release. Bevy Light 2D is a general purpose 2D lighting plugin, and 0.3 now includes light occlusion and dynamic shadows. Big Gossip is a pathfinding library. This pathfinding library will pre-compute all shortest paths in a map so that you can retrieve a path from any node to another in constant time. And finally, Bevy Easy Config is a plugin that allows you to load config files and instantiate them as a resource. First, you need to define your resource, and then you can add it to your app with Easy Config plugin. And going into devlogs, you may recognize this game on screen right now, as we saw it in the showcases. This is the developer's first devlog ever, although this video is in Brazilian Portuguese, and an English version will be released in the future. Moving on to the educational section this week, we've got designing cyclic puzzles for Simon Says, Simon Says being one of the Bevy Game Jam entries. This post covers the cool mathematics behind cyclic puzzles that were involved with working on Simon Says. And finishing off the educational section this week, we've got Extreme Bevy, which is a tutorial series about how to make a low latency P2P web and native game with the latest versions of Bevy, Matchbox, and GGRS. This tutorial series is the tutorial series that inspired the creation of Bevy XPBD, which is now Avian Physics. And that's it for this week. As always, we have the full list of PRs that were merged this week on the site if you'd like to dig in, as well as pull requests and issues that were open this week. PR review is always appreciated, so don't hesitate to drop in and give a PR a try. See if the new functionality works for you. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. The Bevy Game Jam will have wrapped up by next week. So once again, congratulations to everybody who participated. Have a great rest of your day.